All right, now for our special report that will show you just how dire and direct the impact of firecrackers is on the air we breathe. NDTV tested the air quality before and after the Shara Ravan burning and pollutants in the air spiked by 20 times the safe limit. Take a look. Just moments ago, huge swaths of people had gathered here to celebrate the victory of good over evil by burning what was standing here as a 50 feet tall effigy full of lethal firecrackers. But what has that done for our environment and air? But first, let's rewind to five hours ago. The same spot at 4 p.m. showed these readings. PM10 was 119 and PM2.5, the more lethal pollutant as it settles in the lungs and into the bloodstream, was 111. But once the effigy was burnt, PM2.5 and PM10 levels in ambient air spiked on our urban sciences pollution monitor even in neighbouring areas. In fact, it skyrocketed as seen in this graphics. Readings on our pollution monitor went up to over 1000 micrograms per cubic metre, 20 times over safe levels and 846 for PM2.5 particles, 28 times over safe limits near firecracker smoke. Scientists and doctors have documented how firecrackers and fire is deadly. An acute smoke uh, which is constituted of a lot of pollutants. It's not just paper smoke. It's not like burning paper. So there's all kinds of particulate matters. There's all kinds of noxious gases in that, in firecrackers. And it is a sudden load on the pre-existing pollution and the cold temperature. So what happens is you get an acute spike in problems because of pre-existing air quality, the cold temperature, and top of that, you suddenly, you know, put in pollution into the air. And that's what firecrackers do. Just before the Prime Minister led the burning of the effigies, the President appealed for celebrations that would keep air quality in mind. The Supreme Court had banned firecrackers last Diwali. But as of now, it holds its order on a possible ban, leading to a spike in firecracker sales in Delhi, NCR, according to reports. We should have to light the fire because it is pollution and our environment is bad. हालांकि पोल्यूशन के निवारण के लिए पहले तो पोल्यूशन करते हैं दूसरे दिन कहते हैं इतना पोल्यूशन हो गया मेरे को परेशानी हो रहा है ओनली दिस ईयर द सेंट्रल पोल्यूशन कंट्रोल बोर्ड टोल्ड द सुप्रीम कोर्ट दैट द कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ पीएम 2.5 एंड पीएम 10 पार्टिकल्स ओनली इंक्रीज्ड टू 2 टू 3 टाइम्स आफ्टर दिवाली व्हिच इट डिस्क्राइब एज अ नॉट सो सिग्निफिकेंट चेंज बट दिस ईयर डॉक्टर्स बिलीव दैट वी आर ऑलरेडी एंटरिंग दिवाली विद अ पुअर बेसलाइन एयर क्वालिटी एंड सडनली लोडिंग इट देन विद हार्मफुल पोल्यूटेंट्स इज ओनली सेट टू मेक आवर प्रॉब्लम्स वर्स लाइक इट ऑलवेज has. This is Alicia Sajdi with camera person Prem Singh for NDTV. All right, so that report there showing just what a drastic impact firecrackers have on our air pollution, the ambient uh, air pollution around us. Well, to talk more about this, we're joined in studio by uh, Dr. Randeep Goleria, Director of AIMS, Desh Ratan Nigam, a political analyst and writer, also from the Aam Aadmi Party, Akshay Marate joining us. And uh, lastly, Saurabh Bhaseen, a lawyer and a parent. Uh, and Saurabh, your child was in fact a plaintiff in a plea asking for firecrackers to be banned. This was a few years ago. And and here we are again still discussing the very same issue tomorrow we're expecting the Supreme Court verdict on uh, firecrackers and whether they should be banned but uh, as a parent tell us about your concerns and the fact that many people are still in denial they still say firecrackers doesn't have such a bad such a major impact on air pollution Yeah, no, look, I mean, that's been the, the, I mean, my major concern is the health of my child and the health of every children, every child in this uh, city and, and for that matter, the, the elderly, the grown up, my own health. We have been fighting this fight for the last four or five uh, years now to try and uh, build awareness on the issue. A lot of people have had that awareness and I think, uh, you know, your report today, which actually shows what we have been saying for the longest time. You talk about the Shara or Diwali, that PM 2.5 number goes over 1800. And we have been saying that there is a massive spike. We live in an emergency situation in Delhi as it is. We do not need to make the air of uh, toxic air of the city more toxic than it is. So absolutely to build awareness is our goal. We feel 
while we've asked for this ban, we want people of the city to realize that this is harming them irreversibly and immeasurably. It is removing seven to eight years of their life, this pollution from their... Uh, 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 so it is really a question. We want the people of Delhi and I want the people of Delhi to stand up and say, we will not burst firecrackers to save our children, our elderly and our old, our, all of us. All right, sorry, we were just seeing a, a visuals there of the Prime Minister as he watched the Ravan uh, burning. And, and, you know, there's such an ingrained tradition uh, around the Shara and around Diwali. And there are many who argue that it, it's tradition and it's just a few days in, in, in the year. And also about how there are many other factors that uh, cause air pollution. So why get after this one issue? So look, I mean, I've heard that argument before of why I get into any any one uh, issue at any point. But the reality is that nobody. This is not about the Shara. It is not about Diwali. I love the Shara. I love Diwali. I love the the story behind it. I love what it stands for. But I think if we take traditions for what they are without changing what they mean, uh, then then we will we will go nowhere. Because at the end of the day, we have to take traditions for what they mean. If we need to stop burning the effigies and if we need to stop burning patakas to save our children, that is more important. We can celebrate the Shara with our children and our family longer and in a better way if we are pollution free than if we are with pollution. All right, uh, Dr. Guleria, your views on this, this, you know, we, we've had you several times over the years in, in studio and, and, you know, talking to us about air pollution and the harm that it's causing uh, children and people and the adults. And, uh, but it just seems people are not frightened enough. They're not anxious enough. They're, they're not agitated enough over this issue. So the, f the fact that air pollution is harmful is a no brainer. I think there's enough evidence and it's been there for over 60, 70 years. We had the London smog where a large number of people died and they led to the Clean Air Act. So I don't think there is any doubt as far as the data is concerned. And we have these bad months in the Indo-Gangetic Plain, where because of temperature and low wind velocity, ground level pollutants are very high. On top of that, we have festivals like Diwali, where it really spikes. And therefore, it has a very negative effect as far as the health of a large number of individuals, whether they have cardiorespiratory disease, the children or the elderly is concerned. The problem is that I have been always saying that this is a silent killer. So whenever you talk to people, they will say, what is the evidence that so and so or so many people died because of air pollution? Because you have a person who dies of dengue or of H1N1, it becomes big news. But if 20,000 people die during winter months because of air pollution, and they're always, they'll, it, they'll it, always it could say there is no evidence it because it is worsening of the underlying problem. condition. So those who have a heart problem or those who have a respiratory problem, they go into that condition worsens significantly, they may need a ventilatory support, they may have heart failure and that causes the mortality. So the, the, the sort of clear cut evidence in terms of saying that so and so died because of air pollution becomes less substantive and that is why people argue that where is the evidence. But there is enough evidence both based on the data that we have and we are already doing a study where we are monitoring admissions in our and other hospitals over a one year period and it shows a good correlation between as the levels of air pollution increase, the hospital visits for cardiorespiratory problem in children and adults goes up. All right. So, I don't think there's anyone who doesn't know somebody who experiences some kind of a problem during correct. the winter months. And when we come to the specific issue of the Diwali, of, of, of the firecrackers, and uh, still, uh, you know, many people, and I'm uh, sure Mr. Desh Ratan will uh, talk about this, uh, sub say that why are you, do you get after this one issue, crackers on Diwali? So you must understand two things. One is we already, even if you look at air quality index today, or if you looked at it, say, even before the Sarah, it was not good enough. It was still hovering in the poor or very poor range. So we already have an issue of poor quality air, which can be related to a number of factors. And that, I do agree, need to be addressed. It could be crop burning in, in the neighboring states. It could be construction related. Uh -huh. It could be related to vehicular passing. traffic. But over and above that, if you have already a worse situation, let's not further aggravate it by doing something <coughs> which actually causes it to have a significant effect even on normal people. So, we are looking at people I, I with know, underlying heart disease. I know, I know many people who actually leave Delhi during exactly. the Exactly. Many of my patients actually will leave Delhi and come back only say somewhere in January, February because they can't stay in Delhi. It causes a major problem and they will go to their son's place or, or their daughter-in-law's place oh, yeah. or daughter's place or will move out 
during the winter months because the air is so bad that they this they have breathing difficulty this sometimes require oxygen their inhaler uh, requirement goes up and this is a major issue that never gets addressed or never really reaches that importance that it should be all right and tomorrow the supreme court will be weighing uh, the issue of livelihood of, of the people involved in the firecrackers industry versus uh, 1.3 billion people and their right to health and uh, clean air so i think you know this has been an argument which has also been used for in, by the tobacco industry that we yes, should yes we've seen them and there's similar argument is used by the tobacco industry and you'll see these posters on autos also same issues here that you can there is if you look at the cost benefit analysis the cost of health that it's having and the the cost it's taking in terms of treating these individuals is way above the loss of livelihood and this you can find alternate means of livelihood so there's Absolutely. a lot and that can be done this is something if the government works and i'm sure corporates will also come forward to there help find that alternative livelihood so i don't buy this for solution, those this uh, in in the firecracker industry but uh, mr uh, you know uh, what do you feel uh, deshath nigam about this entire issue i know why can we not give up crackers are they so intrinsic to diwali we can find other ways to celebrate we have diyas and uh, you know lighting up our, our our homes why does it have to become an issue in which we're you know at the cost of our health we continue to celebrate this festival uh, the way it's been celebrated for many years when we talk of being intrinsic we talk of society it has become an intrinsic part of the society <coughs> also at the same time realizing the uh, polluting effect of the crackers both need to be balanced and how do we do it you can't do it suddenly i am for regulation not an absolute ban and regulation also and if you look at it chinese crackers have been now stopped from being imported because they were much more dangerous than the indian ones it has but been stopped but crackers overall are, are very no, dangerous no, i am i'm, this I'm, I'm this making a comparative compa chinese no, and indian no comparative crackers. analysis i am doing how you can reduce you know sudden ban cannot be done regulation is all right and as such during that time the ambient quality of the air is as such very poor because of uh, three or four reasons uh, dr guleria said and which are very well established and, and last year supreme court was not able to reach the conclusivity about the causal relationship between crackers and is because there were contradictory But studies No, I'm come on. scientific I mean, studies. Our own report Supreme there. Court. If you saw our report, no, no. you know you had uh, Alicia actually checking uh, the air See. quality, measuring See. it how, around. How how scientifically it is done by those and people? And those pollutants remain in the air let, for let, a long let, let time me, after let, that. Let me so answer. They, they float around there. Let, let me answer. Let, let me there. answer your question. Let me answer your question. Supreme Court had got studies done, and they lifted that ban because there were two or three contradictory studies before the Supreme Court. They said we there is no causal relationship, conclusive causal relationship, and therefore <coughs> more studies are to be required to be done. Because as such, they said the uh, air quality during that period of time is as such bad. So you have to isolate the parameters. I am not saying uh, that. Uh, you But rigid. why should we add on more poison, more no, toxins right. in the air? But when you talk about this as society, you need to regulate it. You know, instead of individual, you know, burning uh, crackers and uh, you know, you should have community handling it. Say a particular community in an area does a community uh, burning of crackers, so that you can reduce it by say nine ten. But I think we 10. need to weed out crackers. Totally, we need to, you know, get over this, uh, you know, mindset no. that Diwali means crackers, crackers no, mean Diwali you, because you, we cannot afford it no, anymore, you, frankly. No, as Dr. Guleria said, I, it's costing I, I, our health, it's no, costing our children. I agree. And, and I not agree. just, you know, the, the the mothers who we see, you know, uh, uh, protesting outside the environment ministry and all there, they can do all that. But the poor, the laborers, the people who have no choice but to be out and about on the roads and you know, breathing in that toxic air, it's for all of them as well, Let and they me, probably I, don't I'll, even realize I'll, it. I'll answer that. you know once we talk of a society you need to find a balance and those balance has to be arrived at after scientific study how much of pollutant can your uh, <coughs> air quality take do we need more studies i think the, the evidence you do is, you do is quite you do because it is about the supreme, crackers at supreme least and the court, impact that it has on our air supreme uh, quality supreme court try to find out last year and they they did not come into any and they had scientific studies before them three or four studies they could not come to a conclusion so i am saying you need to have further more scientific study until that time some regulation has to be done awareness right. has to be done i'd like to get akshay in here since he hasn't had a chance yet but yes akshay uh, you know what is the aam aadmi party doing what uh, to control this air pollution and we've also just had this news of the landfill on fire over the last few days this adding uh, to the uh, toxins in the air 
You see, first of all, one must accept that the sudden spike in air pollution in the months of October and November do coincide with the large-scale crop burning that takes place in Punjab and Haryana. While I say this, there is no denying the fact that Delhi has several local factors, but those local factors never cause the kind of alarm that all, all of us feel in these months when suddenly you see this thick black smog of, uh, of a cloud on, on our heads. And that's when we really get alarmed. And therefore, if you identify this problem correctly, the solution lies in getting these states together and finding a solution to the crop burning specifically. However, on the issue of, uh, of crackers, I would like to say that uh, any societal change is going to take time to actually come into place. Uh, a judicial... Uh, but hasn't uh, uh, this changed? Haven't we been talking about this for several years now? And as, as I was telling you earlier, I've been reporting on this issue for eight, nine years. And it's only the last three, four years that we've seen major traction, major awareness about this issue. And I think it's time people are ready. You know, I mean, you know, we can show them the facts. You know, I think, I think in the month of October and November, the air quality is already so bad that we don't realize how, uh, how much of a drastic change people have, ha have seen when it comes to Diwali firecrackers. I have seen myself in the last three years in Delhi that people have reduced how many crackers they're bursting, whether it's the intensity of the crackers, the number of crackers. I think it's a slow change, but we are moving in the right direction.